Elon Musk's brain implant company. It's called Neuralink. They've submitted a scientific journal, uh, data to a scientific journal, describing the results. Dr. Mark Siegel is with us. Okay, do you know what this data shows us? Is Neuralink a success? Yes, as far as I'm reading on this and hearing about it, three patients' data is being given to the New England Journal of Medicine. I recently interviewed their, their head, uh, editor. It's an incredible place. It's number one in the country for medical journals. And one of the three sites is Barrow Neurological Institute, where Michael Lawton, who is the head of it, is saying this is very, very good data, very safe, very precise. There's nowhere better than Barrow, Stuart. So you got Barrow together with the New England Journal of Medicine, three uh, cases. I predict this is going to be published. That's the one thing that's been missing so far on Neuralink is published data, data that other places can use. They recently raised a billion dollars, as you know, and it's now worth nine billion dollars. But with this now on the market, it's going to help even more. This is a very exciting point where the data comes forward and will likely be published in this austere journal. We've got to wait and see, but mm -hmm. I, I feel very good about the fact that Barrow is involved. Next one, Doctor, your new book. It's called The Miracles Among Us, How God's Grace Plays a Role in Healing. It's, a, look, it's out now. Tell us about your new book. Give me a miracle, Doc. By the way, it's in pre-orders, pre and you can get it right now, and you'll have it in a few weeks. I actually want to say that my miracle today is the Dominican Republic, where there's 10 million visitors a year. It's a big, big tourist, one of the one, number one in the Caribbean. And I have two quick cases to tell you. One, both involve a recreational boat. Be careful, those slides at the back of the boat. One guy actually swam up to the boat and it was accidentally on, and the propeller literally cut right down towards the main nerve in the leg and the main artery in the leg, but stopped just short. And then two great doctors, cured him and over months got him to where he was able to water ski once again. That The miracle wasn't just the medical part. The miracle was also that it stopped just in time. And also in the Dominican Republic, someone that steered a fox had actually dove off a boat and broke his spinal column but wasn't paralyzed. And somehow I was able to airlift him to Miami, where the best, one of the best neurosurgeons in the country repaired his spine. And I said to him, is that the miracle that I airlifted him and that you were able to repair his spine? He said, no. The miracle is that in that hospital in the Dominican Republic, they didn't put the right collar on him. And they had him walking to the bathroom. And somehow he did it without getting paralyzed. Miracles, all of us have miracles, Stuart. You have them, I have them, my patients have them, everyone in the country has them. Come forward and tell me your miracle. I, I want you to explain what role faith plays in healing. What's the connection between faith, God, and healing? Huge. Both stories I just told you, there was daily prayer going on. The parents were praying dearly for the, for the son in the Dominican Republic. They couldn't find him. They couldn't reach him. They prayed. Both, everyone was praying, even the doctors with the one with the propeller injury. Prayer is an essential component here. Prayer, help, courage. And I have several stories where when the person prayed, that's when the heart came back. That's when the person woke up. Tremendous uh, inspirator, inspiratory stories in this book about the role of prayer. Dr. Mark Siegel, that sounds really good. I shall read that. Thanks for joining us, Doctor. Always a pleasure. See you soon. Yeah. Great to see you.